Hey friends, we're back for another build a base episode. Uh, last week we focused on selecting and preparing the fingerboard. Today we're going to take a look at how we pair the fingerboard with the neck and also get our neck started. Let's go. So obviously first things first, we prepare our neck blanks. We get them uh, joined and sanded up and dimensioned. Once we have that done, we will put our neck blank onto the CNC. And basically the first step is to get the headstock angle, the top of the headstock angle in place. This is really important. We like using uh, a headstock angle to get a nice break angle with the strings over the nut that helps keep tension and everything nice and taut and even, especially on a shorter scale instrument. We also get the truss rod uh, route and access route in place. And then we pretty much route the outline of the neck as well, the taper. Um, we also route the sides of the headstock nice and straight because these will get wings. Typically we use a narrower neck blank. If we used one that was wide enough to accommodate our headstock, we'd have a lot more waist. So we keep them thinner to reduce waist and then we will glue up headstock wings once this part of the process is done. Once we have the top of the neck routed, we will get rid of our waists. And then we will go ahead and draw out the back profile of the neck roughly, and we will trim that on the bandsaw. Once we've trimmed away all of the fat, it will look something like this. You can see we sort of have the profile of the neck roughed in. And then we'll go ahead and glue up some headstock wings. Then this is gonna go back onto the CNC. The CNC will finalize the back profile, um, thicknessing the headstock, giving us the rough thickness and taper of the neck as well as roughing out the heel transition. All of these things will be finessed later on using hand tools. We just wanna get all of our thicknesses and dimensions as close as we can. Now that we have the back of the neck routed, we are gonna go ahead and rough cut the headstock shape and get rid of these tabs at the ends. So we'll just line up our tuner holes there and I'm gonna use a fat Sharpie. I like giving myself a little bit of a thicker line. This just gives me a little bit better guidance and a little bit more margin for error as well. As always, use your eye and ear protection. Today's video is brought to you by Blue Painters Tape, the preferred bandage of Ceric bases since 1987. Fucking filming. Every way of all the questions I have to ask. Okay, folks, so we're gonna go ahead and glue a fingerboard to a neck right now. I already have the center line marked out at the uh, edges of the fingerboard here on the neck, and then at the end of the fingerboard, there's also a notch at the center line, so we will use that to register. We're gonna be going ahead and using this two-way adjustable truss rod, standard on all of our instruments. Um, I'll give you a little glimpse at how these work here. As you turn the rod in one direction, the rod flexes, giving the neck forward bow. If you have too much forward bow, then you turn the rod in the other direction and you get back bow. To prevent the rod from rattling against the wood, we will go ahead and put a couple of dabs of clear silicone in the bottom of the channel and then on top of the rod before we go ahead and put the fingerboard on. So we can go ahead and seat the rod. Make sure it's in there. We wanna make sure it's flush with the top of the neck surface there. And then we'll go ahead and we will register our fingerboard to make sure that it is perfectly centered up and that it will not move around once we get some clamps and glue on it. I like to use these little brad point nails. If you remember earlier, we drilled a couple of registration holes in the fingerboard itself. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to line up the center line there line up our notch with our center line at this end. And I always like to double check them because when you move one end, you're liable to move the other. And then we can go ahead and give these brads a little pop. Make sure they sink into the wood a little bit. We're centered there, we're centered there. And now we've got 
two registration holes on our neck as well, and that's gonna keep the fingerboard from shifting around once we get glue on it. Next, we will take some thin tape and we're just gonna cover up this truss rod. We don't wanna get any wood glue into this truss rod channel, and there's a couple reasons. One, wood glue has moisture, which is gonna lead to rust on these steel truss rods. And also any glue that might get in that, that channel is gonna harden up and possibly prevent the rod from functioning correctly. So we're gonna do our best to avoid that at all costs. We only need to put glue on one surface here, I'm putting you know, a fairly heavy amount, but we're gonna clean up the excess. So go ahead and just spread it around with your finger. It's okay to get a little messy at first. We've got the tape in place to protect us, but make sure you get good coverage. This is a very important piece of the instrument. A lot of stress is put on the neck, and so we want a really good glue joint here. Go ahead and clean up those edges too. So once we have a nice even layer, I like to take my finger and kind of use the pad of my finger and press pretty firmly and just drag it along the tape line here. And as you can see, what I'm doing is I'm pushing the glue away from the truss rod channel. And even though that glue is gonna kind of squeeze around once we get the fingerboard on it, I find that a good quarter inch or so is enough to prevent any of that glue from seeping in to the truss rod channel. So now we can go ahead and remove our tape. We can go ahead and take this tape off. Now I'm confident that we've got this board registered properly. And we'll go ahead and put a couple more dabs of silicone on top of the rod. Nothing too crazy, just about a, you know, a small chocolate chips worth. And then this is important. Once we get, as we're placing the board on top of the neck here, we don't want to move it around too much because we're going to be spreading around that glue and that silicone to places we don't want it. They don't mix well. So I can just go ahead and kind of eyeball center there, find that, that tack hole, find the other one there. So now we are in place, pop them down. You can see I can't slide that board around. It's not going anywhere. We're still centered up. And then we've got these custom calls that we made here at the shop. They have the matching radius of the fingerboard, a little bit of foam on there for some cushion, and then a couple of holes drilled out to accommodate the heads of those nails because we're gonna wanna make sure those don't get smashed all the way in so that we can pull them out later. And now we will get some clamps. I like to start with a clamp at each end, and we don't need to go crazy tight, just enough to start to see that squeeze out, which we have already at the ends. This is a good time to go ahead and clean up the glue at the end of the fingerboard where the nut will end up living. Um, it's a lot harder to chisel all that out later on, so get it while it's, while it's still wet. We don't care about the glue at that end. That's all gonna get routed away later on. And then I like to put a clamp about, you know, every four to six inches. I usually use my fist as sort of a, a spacer. And on a short scale Midwestern neck like this, ends up being about five clamps. And that is plenty of pressure. So just make sure your clamps are centered up. Keep an eye on that squeeze out. Get our last clamp in place here. And that's all there is to it. I like to let these hang out overnight and I like to keep the neck upside down like this so that the glue squeeze out doesn't drip along the side of the neck. If it was this way, uh, that'll just get in our way later on when we want to you know, flush route the edges of the fingerboard. Make sure these clamps are all hand tight. Check for squeeze out at the end again, we're good. And that's all there is to it. Uh, we will see you next time for getting the neck prepped and ready for frets. Thanks for watching.